Hey everybody, um, this video is going to be an example of what you might see if you subscribe to my Melody of the Week program. So let me explain a little bit about it and then you can see one of these videos. So the Melody of the Week program, or a Melody of the Week video, is one in which I take a nice short melody and then I talk about different ways we might arrange it on the banjo. So I found this really helpful for my students uh, for a bunch of reasons. One is because it goes through technical exercises of practicing these roles. Another one is there's a bit of an ear training component in which you're like listening to melodies and trying to figure them out. And also uh, it's really helpful for learning how to arrange and improvise because whether you're arranging bluegrass tunes or something different or improvising, you know, you're figuring out different ways of, of thinking about one little melody. So it's been really helpful for a lot of my students. So what you'll see if you go on the website is there is a current melody of the week that each week I rotate in a new one of these videos and they range from really quite easy to really quite hard. If you're looking for easier videos I do have um, a section of primer videos which start really simple and kind of uh, simpler than this video so you can kind of um, work up to it. And if you're a more advanced player uh, some of the videos get quite advanced and I also have another section on the website that is uh, different techniques. So this goes through using different roles or working on uh, melodic style playing or um, reharmonization or uh, transposition or playing up the neck. These sorts of things uh, I talk about in other videos and you can use those techniques to apply them to the Melody of the Week videos. You can also do that with anything you might learn from other teachers or in other YouTube videos or from someone you've transcribed. Anything that you'd like to integrate into your playing, you can apply to these melodies um, to try to make it more seamless and more natural. Anyways, that's about it. If uh, you enjoy this video and this sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing. So again, the link's below. Uh, now before you start, if you're an absolute beginner uh, and you want to check out this video you should know a couple roles first so let me go through the basic roles that you should really spend some time with before trying this out. So the thumb alternating roll looks like this. The forward reverse roll looks like this. And the forward roll is this one here. If you're relatively comfortable with these roles, then go on ahead, check out this video, and uh, yeah, enjoy. So, welcome to Melody of the Week 2381. Um, I'm going to play this melody. If you can hear it, uh, just listen to it, try to get it in your head, see if you can hum it back to yourself. If you can figure it out on the banjo without looking at my hands, go for that. If you want to look at my hands, go for it. If not, I'm going to show the melody in just a second, but this is what it sounds like before I show you the notes. Three, four. If you've got this, try to figure it out with different roles and see if you can uh, uh, come back and check and see if your solutions are the same as mine. Okay, now here's the notes on the screen. So what we're playing is we're playing B and we're sliding to a finger the finger, generally how you play it. B, B, then we have G, D, E, G, B, A, G. All right, so now let's do this with the thumb alternating roll. This one works really well. The one thing you need to know is if you've never done um, quarter notes with the thumb alternating roll, your thumb doesn't have to hit this fifth string. So you can get this pattern, I'll put it up here. All right, that said, uh, let me play it once and then I'll put up the tab. So it sounds like this. B, B, G, D, E, G. Forward reverse roll. 
So uh, remembering with the forward reverse roll when we play this, we're gonna actually have to change a little bit of the rhythm with this melody. So uh, I'll play through what I have and then I'll put it up and we'll talk a little bit about it. So it sounds like this, three, four. here so in that second bar um, we had to get three notes and when we do the forward reverse roll if you have the forward reverse roll up here or wherever I put it um, there's only two circle notes so the easiest way to, to do this is to have a hammer on or a slide to do two notes at once so instead of playing the D and E separate we just did it with a hammer on and same thing here in the third bar instead of playing the B and A at the same time we just put them together with a slide Right, so I'll do that one more time with the forward reverse roll. There's a couple other ways that you could try to figure this out. It kind of depends on what you think is an important note. So you can leave some notes out. For example, in that second bar, you might think, okay, well, I actually don't think the D is that important. Maybe I'll just play a B, B, G, B, G. And then maybe in the third bar, you don't want to play B or A. You just want to play A. You could just go A, G, right? So that would be one variation you could do. So that's a little bit of a, a different way of, of tackling it. I recommend, first thing, try to get all the notes in and see if you can kind of come up with little ideas that you like uh, slurring, the, slurring the notes. Okay, let's do it with the forward roll. Now the forward roll is kind of interesting because we have three circled notes, so it makes it a lot easier to uh, play bars that have three notes in them. But uh, one thing we want to remember is um, we can always repeat the note we're on. So for example, in the first bar, we only have B notes, B, B. So we're just going to play that B three times. Um, now you can do it with slides on each one of these Bs. Or you can just slide on the first one or not slide at all kind of up to you. But let me play, uh, I'll play through my way of going through this and then you can uh, see it in tab. One, two, three, four. that you could do with this uh, is you can also do that combining of notes. So for example, in that second bar, instead of going uh, G, D, E, we could play G twice, and then on that third note, do a hammer on. So G, G, D, and have that hammer on in there. Right? If I put that in there, it would sound like this. through this well let's do the foggy mountain breakdown roll so if you aren't comfortable with the foggy mountain breakdown roll you haven't spent time with it really just spend most of your time going through those first three rolls um, get really comfortable with them first try to vary between them see which ones you like figure out a way of maybe mixing and matching them imagine uh, you were actually playing this in a tune how would you want to play them play it which role or combination of role would work best for you but <clears throat> Here's how you would do with the Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll. And one thing I'll quickly mention if you haven't spent time with the Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll before is uh, notice that it ends with your thumb on the fifth string. And that means that whatever you play after it, you can't start with your thumb. Because if you start with your thumb, you're hitting your thumb twice, you're not gonna be able to uh, scale it up to really fast. So because of that, we start this roll with our index finger. So it's going index, middle, thumb, middle, thumb, index, middle, thumb. So if you're not comfortable with that one, really spend time with the roll itself before you try doing it with the melody. Okay, here's how I would play that melody with the Foggy Mountain Breakdown Roll. It's a little bit weird. It changes the, the rhythm that we would play this 
tune in. But this is what it would sound like. One, two, three, four. Sorry, I biffed the volume on breakdown roll. This is what it should sound like. One, two, three, four. <laughs> sing through it it's a little bit weird because originally remember this melody was b b g b e g b a g but when we're doing it with the fog mount breakdown roll the rhythm that you're getting completely changes b b b g b e g b a g b b So completely changes the way this melody sounds. And maybe it's something you really like, or maybe it's something that you don't like. Um, sometimes the volume mountain breakdown roll is so useful because it's one of the only rolls where you can get that two first notes. B, B, uh, two quarter notes right on the first beat. So it works perfect anytime you need that. But for some melodies, it sounds a little bit weird. I actually kind of like it. It's, it's very different from the original way I played the melody, but it kind of has a nice little variation. All right, so spend some time uh, playing between these. Make sure that you feel comfortable with them all. See if you can mix and match them this week. And uh, yeah, good luck. Till the next one. Bye.